Hello and welcome to this episode of Link Spring Live. I'm Bruce Stimson, Vice President and CIO, and I'm here today with Mark Peacock, our Vice President of Marketing. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Bruce. Great to be here with you again. Uh, let me start by saying there's, there's been a tremendous advancement in the way our buildings operate and the way they're managed. So as they continue to evolve, what's next? What's driving the next BAS? Well, Bruce, again, uh, this is a very interesting topic because the whole concept of intelligent buildings, while we've heard about it for many years, it's still relatively new in the big scope of things. So in order to kind of look at where, what's next, let's look at where we've been, where we are today, and then we'll get into where we're going. Right. So if, if we look at the, intelli the concept of intelligent buildings and the way they were, they really started out of uh, being able to take BAS technology, open platforms, to be able to connect, integrate, and make all the different systems and devices interoperable. Basically, to link those disparate manufacturers together. And uh, okay. that there was the true foundation of the intelligent buildings, in my opinion. No longer just a thermostat on the wall making an air handling unit go. The systems all talk together. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then it's that whole idea of the different, the multi-protocols, the management over the internet, uh, HVAC being part of right. a true intelligent management platform, uh, et cetera. And then, you know, the first intelligent buildings were, you know, you had limited choices. They were primarily new construction focused okay. and were centered around a single building versus multi-campuses or multi-sites across a spread geography and really were directed for the facility and the property management. They are the ones who directed it. It wasn't owner-influenced, etc. And for its time, that was a great leap. Exactly, exactly. It was a single value proposition. It was just about lowering operating right. costs. So that's kind of where we were. Okay. And jumping to today, we kind of go forward, spring forward a little bit. So. How has the intelligent buildings evolved? Where are we today? So we take that foundation, what we just spoke about, and now you kind of add on true remote access 24-7. Uh, the world of open platforms has really started to uh, expand and uh, get more involvement by other players and things like that, right. not just one or two companies. Uh, we live in a world of mobility. Uh, I think all of us know that, you know, smartphones and tablets, uh, you can't live with them, you can't live without them. Yeah. Uh, and it's about that convergence, if you will, of the different systems now. It's not just the HVAC. You've got lighting, you have access control, uh, intrusion detection, sure. digital signage, video, elevators, right. parking, irrigation. So all of that's coming in. And, um, you know, we've heard a little bit about the data and big data and whatnot. So, obviously, that's part of today's intelligent building, right. along with visualizing it. Right. In other words, I've got this data, but how do I see it? How do I understand it? These buildings only make millions and millions of lines of data every day. So. Exactly. <laughs> and it's kind of frightening, uh, you know, how much data that there is. But, again... How do you spot the little... The, the, things that are outside the box and those kind of stuff when you look at through millions of lines. Exactly, exactly. We've shifted from being facility or property management driven right. to now where it's IT is now involved, it's IT driven, it's COO, CEO driven because I'll touch upon in a minute the value proposition has changed a little bit since what I just shared a okay. few moments ago. A couple other quick things is uh, the user experience. It used to be one size fits all, but now today, as I said, you have different people, CIO, IT, facility, they want individual user experience, what's right. good for them, if you will. And then finally, you know, we talk about the cloud, the enterprise, and uh, the energy side of it. All of that is all part of today's uh, intelligent building. And so where we've shifted from that value proposition of being singular, lower operating costs, right. it's now about efficiency, performance, safer buildings, 
smarter buildings, smarter operations, and of course sustainability. So, you know, if we go back to the original kind of premise for our podcast, you know, what's next? Right. What are the trends? What's really going to drive us? Well, interesting, you know, and, you know, all of us can pontificate and, and whatnot, but the way we see it here at Linkspring is, you know, where are this, this next round of intelligent buildings going? And I have to first start up and say, we're going because it's already begun. For example, the devices that we're starting to see are further and further out on the edge. Right. They're getting smarter. And they now, instead of going through middleware all the time, they're now going directly to the enterprise, directly to the cloud. Right. So you're kind of seeing a consolidation or a collapsing of that middleware layer to some degree. So um, the smarter devices are getting smarter and smarter and able to bypass all the middleware that you used to have in place. Exactly. Talk directly to the data exactly. Center. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Then there is the world of apps, apps, and apps. We live in a world of applications, and the same with the building. There's more and more apps being developed, driven, and being put in as part of that whole system, such as uh, in addition to, you know, visibility. In other right. words, you can get access to almost any device, any system today. Are we talking about mobile apps, that little things on your phone? Or are we talking about individual apps that control individual devices on your desktop? Individual apps in this okay. particular case. Okay. Not to discount mobility, right. yes, but it's different apps to help that building run better, run smarter, that type of thing. And, of course, cyber protection. You know, when we first started talking about intelligent buildings and whatnot, cyber protection wasn't even on the roadmap, but obviously today, like anything else that involves the internet, you know, we have to be concerned with cyber protection. We talk about all the data that's being created. Uh, talk to me about the ownership of the data, because it used to be that, you know, things are kind of changing. Why don't you elaborate on that? Yeah, and that's a, that's a very good question, uh, Bruce, because, you know, truly the ownership of the data is owned by the building owner. And it right. should be. Right. It's their building. It's their systems. It's that information that belongs to them. However, uh, you know, people go back and forth on that. And uh, most of that, you know, part of that data is shared, which is okay with the various providers and stuff. But to me, it's all about the owner who owns their own data. And well, well, enough said on that. That's how it should be. Well, I mean, it's the, it's the building that's creating all the built business intelligence that, that's going on. Yep. And, and the owner who, rather than have this data put up in the cloud in a, some service they buy somewhere or something, that they're the ones who, who want to keep control of that data. But they have to be able to protect it. Absolutely. Now, having it hosted by a third party in the cloud, that's fine. But again, at the ultimate, at the end of the day, who owns that data, who right. physically owns it is... And, you know, again, we're advocate. It's the building owner or the owner who owns his own or her own data. One of the most in things that I really feel is where we're going is we've gone, we're, we're changing, going from a building automation system right. to what I've defined as an intelligent building and operating and information system. Okay. So the key here is that it's a operating system for the building that covers both the operational side and the informational side. Okay. And again, the informational side is because of all the data now we have access to, all the analytics that we can lay on top of it, and those types of things. We talk about data, you know, I, we envision that there will be one database or one data pool that everybody can pull down that involves the building side, if you will. Right, right. Uh, and this data is going from, continue will go from just being data to actionable information. In other words, things that I've got this data, it's telling me all of this, I need to do something with it. And okay. what do I do? Okay. And kind of, it's, I, I kind of view that as a word I'll just coin here, and we've all heard it, is operational intelligence. Sure. And that's how, again, 
the building automation system now is going to this intelligent building operating and informational platform. So, so as people are out looking at new devices, they see things in the, the trade mags or whatever. What are the sort of earmarks of those kind of devices? Hey, this is sort of next gen. I think, again, sensors, 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 because, again, we can utilize sensors almost anywhere. So I think, you know, looking at those would be one. Uh, further, because energy continues to be a huge play in the performance of our buildings right. and in operating costs and things like that. Uh, Keyword, meters. Keywords like cloud enabled or cloud availability in the cloud. Yeah, or, or internet enabled. Uh, and again, that's kind of old school, right. but just, uh, being able to connect and, uh, be part of an IP entire. Based, really, exactly. Those kinds of things. So, exactly. So rather than buying a sensor that hooks to the middleware. Exactly. You have the middleware handle everything. Now these devices themselves have an IP address and they can. Go right up to the enterprise, right. go up to the cloud. Gotcha. And the future intelligent building, again, it's, uh, it's the value proposition, again, has changed. We've talked about the previous value propositions. Right. The future is all about financial optimization of that building. It's about this building intelligence, again, the data, sure. if you will, uh, cyber protection. So, it's not so much the technology driving intelligent buildings, it's the business, it's the business case driving the intelligent building. So Mark, if anybody listening wants to learn more about this, uh, how can they find out more, how can they contact you, or, or who should they contact at LinkSpring? Yeah, just go ahead and reach out to me, uh, mark.ptok at linkspring.com. Uh, C-P-Tuck. Yes, C-K. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you, I always forget that, I'm so used to it. Or just call our main number, and uh, Terry would be uh, delighted to find me, switch switch you over. And um, this is a you know very interesting topic. Uh, it continues to evolve, and you know we at Linkspring are um, are going to continue to be at the forefront of this and into the technologies and solutions that we meet we bring to the marketplace. Great. Well, thank you, Mark, for joining me today. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. And thank you for listening to this episode of Linkspring Live. 